testing for corrosive poisoning, hydrocarbon injection in sphere of aspiration, anti-emetics, seizures, and airway compromise patients and elderly patients, no need to try this. So the second important aspect is lavage, what we usually do. These are all the old methods and pumps, the pictures that show, which were used previously for gastric lavage. Now the role has been gradually reduced in certain people of certain group of patients. So this gastric lavage, what they say with uh, recent literature is, it decreases the absorption of any component in general by 42% if done in 20 minutes. And the number gradually comes down in an hour, that is up to 16%. So most of the recommendations in general, they say that more than an hour, don't use lavage. But we have found that in Indian literature, majority of Indian poisonings, some of the plant poisonings especially, they are retained in the stomach for up to four hours. So if you are very sure about the poisoning nature, then you can extend this up to four hours and definitely not more than uh, six hours. Some small RCTs which are made in anticholinergic toxins, some plant poisonings and salicylates, they have told that even for 12 hours and even for 24 hours, it has been beneficial, but it is not a general recommendation. So in general, it is the simplest and quickest and least expensive way to decontaminate. The choice of fluid is tap water, which should be given 5 to 10 ml per kg, and preferably done in awake patients, and presence of an ET tube does not preclude aspiration, even though the patient is intubated when in low GCS. So just because you have intubated, that doesn't mean that you have completely protected the airway. But when the GCS is low, you can always think that you can intubate and then you can give the lavage to give some kind of protection to your airway. So there are a the huge list of contraindications are there. All of us know all these things. Just for completion, I have put this. If it's a corrosive poisoning, obviously you can't do it in fear of perforations. Previously documented coagulopathy or acute coagulopathy which is induced by the poisoning itself that you have found out already before giving lavage, then you can avoid that. Altered mental status, he may not be able to protect his airway. Inactive or diminished airway reflexes. Large pills which can't be aspirated by the lavage if you think and don't go with it. A sharp foreign body, if you have found out already, don't do it, go for endoscopy. A non-toxic or minimally toxic ingestion, even though the quantity is huge and no, you are going to get major benefit by doing a lavage, so you don't do it. So if there's a significant aspiration risk, that is if it is a hydrocarbon, the volatile substances you can avoid. And if it is a aluminum or zinc phosphide, then you can release the phosphine gas. So don't go with your water and better to go with oil. So as of the procedure, the tube is called as Boyas or Evolves tube. All of you must have seen that, that red color rounded tube which is shown in the picture. And you should have a bite block. You have to apply the lignocaine jelly and you should have a basin and which can hold the normal water as well as the washed water. And you have to have an oil, if it is you have to use a specific substances and then stethoscope to check the position of the uh, lavage tube. You should have a multi-parameter. Definitely you have to put the monitor because the patient can throw any arrhythmias during this procedure. Any vagal stimulation can happen, the patient can go into bradycardia. So you have to have an intubation tray side by side and supplemental oxygen always necessary by the patient. And if you want to go with charcoal, you have to plan it immediately and don't delay it. So this is the complete preparation of your uh, PPE. You should have a cap, glass, mask, gown, gloves, and shoes. So how to prepare the patient? Explain the procedure of the, to the patient as well as the attendance if this is conscious enough. And place in left lateral position. All of you know that the absorption may be slower in left lateral position. There are various documentations and literature is there, as well as the aspiration risk will be minimal if the patient is put in the left lateral. So better to use for 15 to 20 degree of tendon block position. The, the diameter, the recommendations vary. Some people say it's 28 to 32 franches and uh, we usually recommend 32 franches at least for the patient if the patient is well-built adult. So these pictures show how to measure. You know that from the nose you have to go to the pharynx to the throat and then you have to go for the xiphoid notch. That is the approximate length of the lavage tube that you have to insert. You can make a mark in that and then you can keep it when you insert up to that mark, you can go to the oral level. And then finally, uh, before that, don't forget to put jelly. And then if the patient is already intubated, you can use the laryngoscope just to guide with less traumatic injuries to the throat and pharynx. So this is the other picture, how they go, but how they check. 
and how they do it. Ideally, the person who is going to give the water, the tap water into the tube should be standing at the much higher level than the stretcher. So it will be easier. The gravitational effect will be giving some um, support to the system. And then finally, you have to lower it and then you have to pump it, the bulb, you have to pump the bulb and it will be aspirated out from the gastric contents. So what about we are doing? You have to administer 100 to 300 ml. That is approximately 10 to 15 ml per kg you can calculate otherwise. So then in children, the total amount will be 50 to 100 ml for a single lavage. You can repeat it. So you can manually agitate a little bit if you want and then you can withdraw the fluid. Repeat until the lavage return is clear. That's very important. It's not just once you are doing and then you are stopping it. You have to repeat it until the lavage is clear. It's not a very pleasant experience, but it gives very effective results, especially it's done when it's done in an hour. So generally 5 to 20 liters is required according to the patient's body weight to thoroughly cleanse the stomach as well as the content of the uh, stomach. So don't forget to save the aspirate for toxicology screening. And after completion of the lavage, the charcoal should be administered via the tube or you can change into a uh, Riles tube. So in general, in many of the centers, the utility of Evolve tube is coming down because of the comfort as well as the availability, the patient acceptance. So uh, the comparison is generally, it's not comfortable as much as the Riles tube, that's one thing. The lung entry is possible for Riles tube and for Evolve tube, there is no documented lung entry. Useless for capsules and large tablet fragments use a Riles tube. It is not going to bring out all the large capsules or fragments. So that will be done by your Boyas or Evolve tube. And G bleed chances, obviously there will be some trauma in Riles tube then the Evolve tube will definitely make some more trauma, but in experienced hands, it may be a uh, little bit lower. Uh, the benefit-risk ratio will be better in this Evolve or Boyas tube. So this is one patient where the documented Riles tube has entered where? Where is the Riles tube? Can you see it in the picture, the printed line? Could be a right bronchus, right side of the lung. So in the risk factor will be an unconscious patient where he is not able to tell his symptoms, an uncooperative patient, intubated airway where you don't know, an inexperienced operator, all these things can happen with a simple Riles tube itself. So the confirmation, you have to ideally do an auscultation. It's not 100% confirmatory. Then you have to aspirate and you can go with some radiology. The complication is either pneumothorax or you can lavage the lung itself. So placement can be improved. This error can be reduced by putting the patient in a sitting up posture, if possible, clinically applicable. Then you can ask the patient to swallow sips of water, the routine thing, what we do in Riles tube, and then direct visualization and staged insertion, if it is possible, through a... So adsorption. So what we use for adsorption? It's charcoal. What is adsorption and what is absorption? Adsorption means the surface will absorb, the gross surface area will be there, it will be absorbed, it will be clinging, the material will be clinging to the surface area. Absorption means the material will be absorbed into a gross area of, diluted area of empty space. It could be an air filled space or it could be a liquid space. So it is prepared from the vegetable matter, for time's sake I am just going into, the time is over. Five minutes? Yeah, I'll just run through because the huge slides are there. Okay. So I'll just skip the slides and I'll just wind up with some important slides. So charcoal dose is one gram per kg. In multi-dose activated charcoal, it's 0.5 grams per kg that you have to go about with. Then this is the charcoal preparation. All of you know that. It's a black colored material. What we use to absorb the poisoning, the unabsorbed poisoning, we are increasing the surface material of the charcoal and then we are applying it to that so that it will be completely absorbed and it will promote elimination by enhancement. So you can keep this mnemonic, charcoal won't work on all these things. That is caustics, heavy metals, alcohol. Charcoal doesn't work on all these charcoal. The chlorine, others, all these things are in the web, so you can just refer and go ahead with. So there's a rationale is some drugs will be having entro entroentric and entrohepatic circulation. So all these things can be improved by multidose activated charcoal. So charcoal is confirmed as, it's considered as the GI dialysis technique. The rationale is, it has a prolonged half-life drugs that you can use for MDAC. It interrupts the entroentric and entrohepatic circulations. 
So agents benefited by MDAC, the list is Dapsone, Quinine, Theophylline, Nemetritin, and Salicylate drugs. And cathartics, we use some kind of agent as a cathartic along with the uh, charcoal. That is one of the things, sorbitol. That's one gram per kg as a 70% solution we are using. Whole bowel irrigation, we are using polyethylene glycol as a whole bowel irrigation for the substances which you have to, we are, we are not able to absorb through your charcoal or your previous measures of decontamination. You can go for whole bowel irrigation. So it's contraindicated in ileus, compromised airway, bowel perforation, and ischemia of the bowel. So it's mainly indicated sustained release of entry coated tablets, substantial quantities of iron, drugs not with well absorbed by activated charcoal, or drug le drugs level raising by your lavage or AC in spite of your things, and body packers. So the final things I'm just winding up, enhancement of elimination concepts. There are two things, one is intracorporeal and extracorporeal. Intracorporeal techniques will be forced dyes and alkalization, and repeated administration of charcoal. Extracorporeal techniques will be hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, hemofiltration, and plasma pharesis. So you know that alkaline diuresis is an important factor. You have to maintain a pH of urine pH of more than 7.5 to better promote the drugs which are weak acids. That is an important component. So what you are going to do, either you have to do a forced diuresis by giving volume, or you can put three ampules of soda by carbon 500 ml of D5 water, and then you have infu infu infused at 200 to 250 ml of per hour, and maintain the pH not 7.0, it's 7.5 actually. So the hypokalemia will be a major threat, and you have to supplement potassium for these patients. So forced diuresis will be all the IUMs, barium, chromium, calcium, potassium, lithium, and iodide. And alkaline diuresis will be mainly benefited for salicylate. And hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, and other methods, the, the main important aspect that you have to remember is the hemoperfusion removes the drugs of more than 300 Dalton sizes, and it removes protein-bound drugs and removes lipid-soluble drugs. Whereas hemodialysis, that's hemoperfusion, hemodialysis treats renal failure, there will be a risk of thrombocytopenia. It's unusual with the schemoperfusion. Thrombocytopenia risk will be more, and you have to monitor other things. And finally, hemofiltration. The techniques and all I'm just skipping. Plasma is very, very important. We are mainly using for verapamil, theophylline, and the 3% yellow phosphor. That is the ratol paste. The plasma is highly beneficial. And then exchange transmission for some people that we are doing for methemoglobinemia and sulfimoglobinemia. And chelation therapy, all of things are in theory. That's used for lead, arsenic, and mercury, heavy metals. And finally, the antidotes, the huge list will be given in all the textbooks for what drugs and what antidotes that we have to give. So please remember that in final as a take home message, this toxin or toxicology is not by the quality of the uh, component, it's by the quantity that determines whether it's a poison to a particular patient or not. The four limbs of managing this, the ABC, the elimination, as well as the decontamination, and finally the antidote. The main component is decontamination and the gastric lavage for whom to do and whom to not to do and what are the plus and minuses. So that is the whole idea of giving this lecture. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Aluminium phosphide or phosphorus poisoning. It is a red color paste or red color powder or aluminium tenamarthu matra. In the moon, definitely you have to use coconut oil instead of water. That's very important point you have to. And multi dosed activated charcoal you have to use. When to stop, you have to stop multi dosed. Octari stool. After that, you have to stop. These two important points you should know as a postgraduate student. Any questions from the floor? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful talk. I welcome retired professor Dr. A.T. Tyagarajan, sir, to Medi CME 22. I request you, sir, to felicitate the first speaker for today's session, Dr. Jude Vinod.
please, sir. I request Tyagaradhan sir and the speaker to kindly take your seat among the audience. Bezovers, unicorn horns, mistletoe berries. They might sound weird, but in fact, they're being used in times of ignorance. Now, to shed light on the topic, antidote, triple S bites and sting, I call upon Dr. A. Saravanavir, Senior Consultant and Head, Department of Emergency Medicine, Meenakshi Hospital, Tanjavur. He's also a national faculty for disaster medicine. Please, sir. So, good morning, all. Thanks for the warm introduction. Uh, actually, I'm a student of uh, Madhuri Medical College. So, 98 batch. I'm returning 2004. After uh, 18 years, I'm landing my foot here. Uh, so it's a great honor and uh, privilege for me to stand in front of you. Uh, I met my colleague, uh, Dr. Sarona Madhav. So he's an uh, assistant professor in medicine department. And my senior, Dr. Arul Prakash, and uh, so many assistant professors when I was meeting, uh, doing my UGs. They are now professors, and they are uh, becoming dean. So it's very happy to meet them here. So and uh, uh, thank them for giving this golden opportunity to talk in front of you. Uh, the topic given to me is uh, antidotes as well as uh, bite and stings. Uh, uh, first, we will discuss something about uh, snake bites. Uh, you should identify a snake which is poisonous or non-poisonous. Most of the times, uh, the patient will uh, come with a snake with a crushed head or a crushed body. And we should be able to identify that with the remaining parts. So usually we say when the head is triangular or if it's oval, so we can differentiate. If the head is triangular, it is uh, poisonous. And if it is oval, it is mostly non-poisonous. And with the uh, fang marks, if it is, there are two fang marks, then it's a poisonous. If it is multiple uh, teeth bites, then it's a non-poisonous. But if, uh, if they are bringing the whole uh, snake or whole body of the snake, then we should easily identify that. So this is a common cobra, that is called snaja naja, with the identified with the common hood. So this is a common crate, otherwise it's called as banded crate. Tamil la vandu kanna kattiviriyan solluvanga. So modalla vandu nagapambu, nalla nalla pambu nu solluvom. Idu vandu kattiviriyan. So sometimes and the banded vandu double bands are irukalam, single bands are irukalam. So this is a common crate or kattiviriyan. So common crate and cobra both are uh, neurotoxic and crate is sometimes hemotoxic also. Uh, so, uh, cobra is postsynaptic neuromuscular blocking agent. Uh, so, the vessel venom is postsynaptic uh, neuro neuro uh, neuromuscular blocking agent. But the common crate, it is presynaptic. So, cobra bite will recover with neostigmine therapy. We can uh, test with the 2 milligram of neostigmine. If the uh, uh, neurological uh, uh, paralysis is improving, then we can confirm it is. If the patient is not uh, bringing the snake, we can confirm uh, it is a cobra. Uh, even some of the institute they are managing with neostigmine alone. Even they don't give ASV if they are confirmed with uh, uh, cobra bite. And this one is a Russell viper. Tamil la vandu kannadi virian solu. Oramu vandu kannadi mari. So on the diamond shaped they do So usually on this it will not grow more than six feet. Uh, classical body will be very stout. Head and tail will be very narrow. So aqua dark snake pathale. But uh, very commonly we encountering in uh, Tanjavur and Karalu district. They are the most common uh, agriculture fields, so we are I am commonly encountering this type of uh, snake bites there. It's purely hemotoxic. So for the hemotoxic uh, snake bite, uh, we have to do a 20 minutes whole blood clotting time to confirm uh, whether the uh, snake has uh, injected the venom into it. So 90 to 95 percent is a dry bite. So we know that uh, the snake the venom is a, is a saliva of the snake. So it can control uh, how much it to inject. So if it is thinking that it's a prey, it will inject the whole venom. But if it is thinking that uh, it's, it's a just uh, escape from that particular uh, human or enemy, so most of the times it will have a dry bite. 
so we have to do that 20 minutes whole blood clotting time to confirm is there any vinamination so just to take a 2 ml of blood in a uh, test tube plain test tube it should not be uh, edt or other uh, uh, chemical uh, coated test tube so, so a plain test tube should be taken you have to pour 2 ml of uh, patient's blood then keep it uh, without disturbance in a test tube tray so after 20 minutes you have to take and you have to see whether the blood is clotted or not if the blood is clotted then it is a no, uh, most probably it's a dry bite if the blood is not clotted then you have to give 10 vials of asv so the common uh, tamil nadu government recommendation is maximum is 30 vials so they say uh, the biggest russell viper which was caught was uh, uh, it emitted nearly 180 milligram of venom one vial of asv neutralizes six milligrams of venom so maximum for 180 milligram you have to use 30 vials so not more than that you have to use so first you have to use 10 vials it has to be given in a 5% dextrose with pre-medication uh, avil and hydrocortisone. So infused over uh, two, two hours, then we hide for another six hours. After uh, six hours, you again check the 20 minutes clotting, uh, whole blood clotting time. So because we should not uh, test immediately after the AC is over. Uh, because the liver, it will take some time to synthesize the prothrombin and other uh, clotting factors. So we have to give the uh, liver uh, for some time. So at least we have to give six to eight hours. So after six hours, you have to check the again 20 minute whole blood time, clotting time. If it is not clotting, give another 10 vials of ASV. So you have to give another uh, two, it will be infused, to infused over two hours. After two hours, wait for six hours. Then after eight hours, again repeat the 20 minutes whole, clot, whole blood clotting time. Still not clotting, give the third 10 vials of ASV. Even after 30 vials of ASV, if the blood is not clotting, then it is not Russell Viper bite. That's a, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, Tamil Nadu government uh, guidelines says. So most of the times it will respond with the 30 vials of ASV. That's the maximum dose ASV we have to give. So there are some other uh, snakes. This again a Russell Viper. This is a saw scaled Viper. So this is comparatively rare in Tamil Nadu, but still uh, uh, some uh, areas in Mailadadurai and they have reported that. Surut Iverian Sulwangadu. So, this is the classical identification marks. So, we can see the call of the call. We can see the marks. Oh, sorry. Okay, so, we can see the silhouette mark. We can see the bird's head. We can see the foot shape. So, we can see the classical head with the triangular head. This is the Surut Iverian, the Sauskeld Viper. So, it's almost an endangered species. So, it's coming a little bit rare. So, all these big fours are covered by our ASV. So this is a uh, king cobra, so which is a uh, separate species. It's not a, a bigger uh, uh, nalla pambu. Nalla pambu is the size of the king cobra. So uh, that is different species. This is totally different species. And we commonly, we, can, we are not encountering this one in our common paddy fields or uh, our uh, common uh, household areas. So this is commonly we, we encountering in the Western Ghats. The Kutralam and the Maripoi, Paul Arivi, Ten Arivi. So, on the mari so this is yearly one or two people uh, is getting uh, bitten by king cobra. So, government is not having money to invest uh, to manage king cobra. So, that's why uh, Tamil Nadu government says if it is minimum uh, 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 patient, they are requiring more than 30 vials of ASV. It is not the big four. So, not a common cobra or crate or viper or saskel viper. Thing else like king cobra or one most thing is. Uh, uh, hump nosed pit viper so the, for that also we don't have uh, anti venom and uh, this is a sea snake so i have encountered only three cases for the past 10 years in tanjavur so those three all these three patients are coming from the nagapatnam so when you are residing in a seashore area then sometimes you may be <coughs> encountering uh, these patients but very rare commonest complication is renal failure uh, snake, uh, sea snake also doesn't have any antidote so only symptomatic management and if the needed the patient has to be Dialyst. So overall uh, management for snake bite is adequate hydration. So give uh, ASV for that uh, big four. Uh, the important thing is uh, you have to give proper antibiotics because it's a saliva of the uh, snake. So it contains all the uh, three groups of bacteria, uh, gram positive, gram negative and anaerobic. So antibiotics should be uh, broad spectrum which is covering all the uh, three groups of bacteria. And if needed, the patient may require dialysis. So what is the difference between these two? <coughs> Which is more dangerous? Sindel, Karindel, Abla Soluanga, sorry. 
அப்படிலாம் எதுவுமே கிடையாது திஸ் இஸ் அ ஐடியல் கார்ஃப் ஸ்கார்பியான் ஸோ இது வந்து நட்வாக்களின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க ஸோ நட்வாக்களி இஸ் லெஸ் பாய்ஸ்னஸ் தென் ஸ்கார்பியான் ஏன் அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் இட்ஸ் ஹண்டிங் ஹேபிட்ஸ் இஃப் யூ சி டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் எப்படி கண்டுபிடிக்கிறோம் நட்வாக்களி கார்பியான் ஆர் ஏபிள் டு அப்ரிஷியேட் த டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் இட்ஸ் அ பின்சர் அந்த முன்னாடி இருக்கு இல்லையா அது வந்து பின்சர் சொல்லுவோம் பின்னாடி இருக்கிறத தான் கொடுக்கு ஸோ பின்சர் இஸ் ஸ்மாலர் ஃபார் அ ஸ்கார்பியான் அண்ட் ஃபார் அ நட்வாக்களி த பின்சர் இஸ் பிக்கர் ஓகே ஸோ த ஹண்டிங் ஹேபிட் இஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஸோ பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த லார்ஜஸ்ட் பின்சர் த நட்வாக்களி தட் இட் கேன் ஹோல்ட் த ப்ரே அண்ட் இட் கேன் ஈட் இட் அப் ஸோ இட் டசன் ரிக்வயர் லாட் ஆஃப் பாய்சன் ஸோ தட்ஸ் வை நேச்சர் ஹேஸ் டிசைன் லைக் தட் பட் ஃபார் ஸ்கார்பியான் த பின்சர் இஸ் ஸ்மால் இட் கேன் நாட் ஹோல்ட் த ப்ரே ஸோ த ப்ரே வில் டென் டு எஸ்கேப் தட்ஸ் வை இட் இன்ஜெக்ட் லாட் ஆஃப் வினாம் இன் டு இட் ஸோ தென் த ப்ரே வில் பி மூவிங் அரௌண்ட் ஸோ ஆஃப்டர் சம் டைம் இட் வில் டை தென் யூ வில் கோ அண்ட் இட் ஸோ தட்ஸ் அ மெயின் ரீசன் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் ஸ்பீஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்கார்பியன் சேவிங் அந்த பிகர் ஸ்பின்சர் ஸோ மோஸ்ட்லி த பேஷன் வில் பி டெவலப்பிங் ஆட்டோனமிக் நியூரோ சிஸ்டம்ஸ் டிஸ்பங்ஷன் மோஸ்ட்லி பெயின் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் வித் லோக்கல் இன்ஃபில்ட்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் லோக்கல் அனசிட்டிக் இஸ் மோஸ்ட் மோர் தன் என் ஆஃப் அண்ட் இஃப் நீடட் பேஷன் ஷுட் பி கிவன் ப்ரோசோஸ் இன் மென் அவர் த பேஷன் இஸ் டெவலப்பிங் ஆட்டோனமிக் டிஸ்பங்ஷன் லைக் ஸ்வெட்டிங் ஹைப்போ டென்ஷன் டெக்கிகார்டியா ப்ரையாபிசம் சம்திங் லைக் தட் ஸோ அடல் டோ டோஸ் இஸ் ஒன் மில்லிகிராம் தேர்ட்டி மைக்ரோகிராம் பெர் கேஜி ஆஃப் ப்ரோசோசின் தென் சாரி பீஸ் லாஸ்ட் அண்ட் ஹார்னட்ஸ் So these types of insects, little bit uh, dangerous. Usually single bite uh, doesn't cause major uh, life-threatening event, but uh, commonly pain is the major side effect. Then comes the anaphylaxis. Uh, so uh, if it is a honey bee sting, so if, if it is a multiple honey bee sting, you have to remove with, uh, uh, don't remove, uh, pluck the, that particular sting with uh, your uh, fingers or uh, your nails. So it will be having some uh, venom bag. If you are touching that, whole venom will be injected into your body. So instead, use a, a ATM card or your visiting card-like structure. You have to scratch it on the skin. Thereby, you can remove all the stings before coming to the hospital. Even if you are using the patient in the hospital, remove with the... Uh, and other things uh, for dog bite. So definitely, we should uh, clean with a lot of water. And uh, we have to go for uh, anti-rabies vaccine. Uh, So coming to the antidotes, just uh, because of uh, time, I will just uh, name the uh, poison and its antidote. And I'm not going to discuss about the dosage. For paracetamol poison, it is NSL-16. So it's a, since it's a common po- thing, not only for paracetamol poison, we are for rat killer paste. That's yellow phosphorus poisoning also, we are using that. So dose is uh, so on, 140 mg per kg oral, then followed by 70 mg per kg. every 6 hourly up to 17 doses so for iv i have to use 150 mg per kg iv over 1 hour then 50 mg per kg over 4 hours followed by 100 mg per kg over 16 hours so those uh, two things can be followed for anticholinergics antidote is physostigmine so uh, for uh, tricyclic antidepressants antidote is sodium bicarbonate for ssri antidote is ciproheptadine for arsenic lead and mercury like heavy, heavy metals so the antidote is bal british anti levisit or dimercaprol or you can use dipenicillamine those drugs too can be used for the heavy metal poisoning and for benzodiazepine it is flumasenil so uh, previously it was not available for the past 7 uh, to 8 years it's commonly available so the dose is 0.2 mg initially if it is patient is not responding give another 0.3 mg so maximum it go up to 5 mg so the main thing you have to see is uh, sometimes the patient may develop seizures whenever you are giving 